stand, let us pray. God, for as much as without you we're not able to please you, mercifully rule and direct our hearts in this service and in all things. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Amen. The hymn, when morning gilds the skies, 474 in the red hymnal.
readings from Holy Scripture. A reading from Hebrews. Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers. For by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. <clears throat> Remember those who are in prison, as though you were in prison with them. Those who are being tortured, as though you yourselves were being tortured. Let marriage be held in honor by all, and let the marriage bed be kept undefiled. Defiled. For God will judge fornicators and adulterers. Keep your lives free from the love of money, and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Through him... Then let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of the lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read Psalm 112 responsibly by half verse, as shown in your bulletin. Hallelujah. Happy are they who fear the Lord and have great delight in his commandments. Your descendants will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in their house. And their righteousness will last forever. Light shines in the darkness for the upright. The righteous are merciful and full of compassion. It is good for them to be generous in lending. And to manage their affairs with justice. For they will never be shaken. They will not be afraid of any evil rumors. Their heart is established and will not shrink. They have given freely to the poor. And their righteousness stands fast forever. They may hold up their head like an arm. The wicked will see it and be angry. They will gnash their teeth and pine away. The desires of the wicked will perish. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen.
according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. On one occasion, when Jesus was going to the house of the leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When he noticed how the guests chose the places of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor, in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. And the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place. Then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest, the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit down at the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humble. Those who humble themselves will be exalted. He said also to the one who had invited him, When you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors, in case they may invite you in return, and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind. And you will be blessed, because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to your God, our Rock, and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. This morning, I want to preach on keeping the marriage bed undefiled. No. <laughs> I said, I'll leave that reading for more of an expert. But that's the reading from Hebrews. But this morning, I invite you to reflect with me on the gospel reading. And as I read this text, Jesus is at this dinner, and there are people who are lobbying to be seen. And so I wondered, Bruce, how many people in that crowd were struggling with what we call histrionic personality disorder, <laughs> right? It is a mental health condition <coughs> marked by an overwhelming need for attention. Of course, there are other factors and components such as unstable emotions and poor self-image. But there are people who act inappropriately to get attention. And of course, there are other factors that would go into that. And so perhaps I'm reading a bit too much into the text. But what we do know is that there were people who were lobbying to be seen by Jesus and the hosts, rather. And so Jesus offers a subtle warning for those of us who crave attention, who like to put ourselves in the spotlight, who like to be seen and known as well-connected to others, particularly those in high places in the community. He says such behaviors can often cause embarrassment and or leave a distaste in others. And so Jesus instead encourages humility and he teaches us the importance of being humble. Where in our lives? Do we need to exercise a bit more humility? That's a reflective question, I believe, that's implicitly put to us at this dinner Jesus is attending. Now, this is the third dinner invitation that Jesus accepts with the Pharisees. There is something significant, something important about having dinner with others, with family and friends. Would you agree? Yes, very important. How often do you eat dinner together with your family and friends, or a meal, breakfast, lunch? Research has shown that families who eat dinner together or eat meals together regularly are more well-adjusted. It reaps many benefits. It strengthens bonds, better eating habits, a sense of belonging, improved mental health and physical condition, Better grades for the children. This is research. This is not Mario, right? 
and increased savings. At least $40 more a week you could save if you ate together instead of eating out. And that's money you could be given to the church. <laughs> so I encourage you to eat meals together and at home. But the point is, may we strive to spend a bit more time together because Jesus emphasized fellowship and eating dinner and meals together. Let us strive to do so. But more importantly, I believe the question is being asked, is Jesus invited to our dinner tables? Is he present at our every meal? He was present at this meal. And he did so with the Pharisees. Some of them, the leader of the Pharisees in this case, some of them had disputes with Jesus. And they sometimes were very hostile to him. And yet he continues to engage with them and dine with them. Powerful. How willing are we to engage with people who are sometimes hostile toward us? How willing are we to sit down and have a meal with the very person who offended us, who gets under our skin from time to time? We are also told that while at dinner, they were watching him closely. We're not meant to miss that line. Very important line. They were watching him closely. It is a sober reminder for those of us who follow Jesus that people are always watching. Have you ever been surprised by something your child or your grandchild says to you and you didn't realize, wow, they were listening? They were watching? Yeah, it happens. People see us, they observe us, and they are always watching. And so as the saying goes, the best sermon we could ever preach is the life we live. And so be careful, because others are watching. But more importantly, not only do we let our light shine before others so that they may see our good works and give glory to our Father in heaven, as Matthew tells us, but the scripture today also tells us Jesus was noticing them too. And I wonder, how does it feel to know that God is watching our every move? Notice, for example, he took observance of how the guest chose places of honor. If Jesus is observing our lives today, what is he seeing? What is he observing? Is it more comforting or terrifying to know that God sees our every move? The children's hymn says, Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. Oh, be careful, little mouth, what you say. Oh, be careful, little hands, what you touch. Oh, be careful, little feet, where you go. There's a Father up above looking down in tender love. Oh, be careful. Right? And so sometimes... <coughs> People will say, oh, Father, I didn't mean to say that. I didn't realize you were here. I say, well, God is everywhere. He's always watching. So what's the difference? See, God is watching Kaylee sleeping right now. <laughs> but she wasn't when she was on her iPad. <laughs> God is watching. Wake up. God notices, and God is unafraid to tell us what we need to hear. So Jesus watched, and he spoke. And today we are told that he notices a lack of humility when he observes the guests at the dinner table. The guests scramble for front row seats. And when I read that line, I said, I know, no Episcopalians were in that crew. <laughs> <laughs> right? They want to be closest to the host, closest to the front. And so it prompts Jesus to tell them about their behavior, where to sit. And he offers them a parable about those who are exalted will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be lifted up or exalted. The point is, on the surface level, humility is important. How do you feel when you interact with somebody who is arrogant, cocky, full of themselves, believe they are better than others? Hmm? When we are arrogant, we might find ourselves lonely and apart from others, rejected, 
and not feeling too good about ourselves. You end up hurting yourself. Because nobody, let's face it, nobody likes to know it all. Right? You ever been in a group with somebody who just knows it all? Mm, tell them, Father Mario, say that's not good. <laughs> well, when you are humble, your character stands tall, and you open doors of all kinds. People welcome you. Keep that in mind. But of course, Jesus has given us more than advice on humility and good table manners and good social manners. It's a parable after all. And as we learned in Sunday school, a parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. So there's a deeper meaning. And I believe he's telling us something important about the kingdom of God and his mission. So three very quick things. First, I think he's telling us something about how God, God's kingdom operates. It is a kingdom that's operated by grace. It is by grace that we enter God's kingdom. Not by our status, not by how much we do, not by who we know. You can't get to heaven by knowing grandma and her prayers. Grandma could pray for you, but it is on our own merit. And he's saying, put status aside. Stop lobbying for position. Remember, this was the same thing the disciples were doing. Jesus, grant me to sit at your right or your left. And he says, uh -uh. unless you become like one of these little children, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. So humility is an important mark in the kingdom of God, and it reminds us that we are saved by grace and we enter God's kingdom by grace. Humility helps us to recognize that we need God, that we are dependent on God like a child, a little child, is dependent on us. But pride, the opposite of humility, causes us to reject God. So we stay humble and remember that nothing we do, nothing we do, deserves God's love and compassion and mercy. God loves us, as someone said, not because we are essentially good, but because God is good. We enter God's kingdom by grace. And so it doesn't matter which position you hold in the church, pulpit to pew, we enter by grace. So God's kingdom is a kingdom of grace. Shall we show grace to others, regardless of their status, regardless of their position? And secondly, God's kingdom is open to all. The poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and so forth. I was so enamored yesterday. There were two parents who were blind, or partially blind, walking through the mall. The little one was partially blind, and each of them had their canes, and there was a little one that was not. And she was leading them around throughout the mall. It didn't keep them back. And it felt so good that people embraced them, and they felt that they were a part of the shopping experience. This is how God's kingdom is envisioned in this passage. At the great wedding banquet, all will be invited. And that's why when we come to the altar rail, it's one of the reasons, tradition, it's why we kneel. Because it's letting us know that all are welcome and none of us are better than the other. We all kneel before God. When Jesus encouraged the leader to invite the poor and those whom would not typically be invited, he said, don't invite your brother, your sister, don't invite your family, your friends, and those. Now, you know, that may not go well in your family because you have a function and you don't invite people. Hmm? Leah, you know something about that? Yes. <laughs> I'm still getting calls. <laughs> How dare you get married? I, I said, but I didn't come to your wedding. No, I didn't do that. <laughs> I did not say that. <laughs> no, no, no. But that's the point. Jesus is saying the kingdom is open to all. People who might not look religious. People who we might not expect to be at church. They might not have the right table manners. In fact, they might not look as dedicated as we might be. But they are still welcome. And so, dear friends, for those of us who sometimes scoff at others, those of us who might be inclined to look down upon others, and we may all do it sometimes, we ought to be like the publican. Have mercy on me. 
and recognize that none of us are better than the other because God's kingdom is open to all. The point is, let's treat others right and as if they too belong to the kingdom of God, no matter what they look like. And so finally, finally, this reading calls us to do some introspection. Remember, God's kingdom is a kingdom of grace. God's kingdom is open to all. Now we're being asked, what kind of hosts or hostesses are we in God's kingdom? He turns and he talks to the host and says, this is how you should be. Invite people who can't give you anything. In other words, as hosts, have we invited Jesus to the party of our lives? Are we fellowshipping with Jesus? If so, what is he observing about us in this fellowship? What kind of company are we keeping in God's kingdom? Do we serve only because it gives us recognition or praise? Are we attention seekers in God's kingdom? Do we do things for others based on who they are, even if they can't do for us? What kind of host are we? We must be willing to do for others even when they can't do for us. Are we as hosts willing to step outside of our comfort zone? For those of us who host Jesus in our lives, we must be willing to step into places and engage with people we would choose perhaps otherwise not to. If we are going to host Jesus in our lives, we must make a concerted effort to engage with every and anyone, whosoever will, may come. Can we say that that is our attitude? Can we say that we are great hosts of this Jesus? So Jesus has come to make us better hosts and members of God's kingdom. His mission is about changing our thinking and our way of being. He shows up at dinner tables as a sign of godly fellowship. And of course, food represents life. And so he's telling us, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. He wants us to be hosts who are full of life, full of energy, fellowshipping, and proclaiming God's love to everyone. Does that make sense to you? Does it make sense to me? Maybe then, as my prayer is this morning, be great hosts and hostesses of this Jesus, and may our lives be a party, a great big celebration with Jesus in our midst. Amen. Let us stand now. <clears throat> And affirm our faith. The words of the Nicene Creed, page 358. 358. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God of the Father, God of God. today are form two found on page 385 in the book of common prayer bound together in christ let us pray with one heart and mind singing oh lord hear my prayer <laughs> God's people. 
people throughout the world, for our bishops Michael and Eugene, for this gathering and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. I ask your prayers for Rowan Walsh, Jeff Painter, Alex Reeves, and all who serve in our armed forces. Please add your own petitions, either silently or aloud. Peace to the people of Ukraine. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. All these things we lift up to you as we sing. sisters in Christ, let us share in peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace. Good morning, church. Good morning, Good morning priest. priest. Joy to welcome all of you and those of you joining us via social media here this morning. Thank God for your presence and pray God's continued blessings upon each of us. I want to begin by sending birthday shout outs to those celebrating birthdays. Zoe, whose name actually means life, right? At least according to my understanding. How old are you going to be, Zoe? Eight. Eight years old. Oh, my heavens. Yes, eight years old. Anyone else celebrating birthdays this week? All right, so we're going to sing It's All Your Party, right? And you can cry if you want to. <laughs> All right. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday Happy birthday, Zoe. God bless you. I want to extend wedding anniversary greetings to George and Sandy Martin. Anyone else celebrating anniversaries? No. Please keep George 
insanity in your prayers. George had a fall recently and it's not doing too well. And of course, Sandy needs as much prayers as she can as she continues to help him um, recover while at home. So please keep them in your prayers. We also want to um, welcome Ralph back. It's his story to tell and he will tell you. Um, so <laughs> I'm sure he can let you know. But Ralph, it's good to see you back on the organ. It all seems well. Yes. All right, good. The doctor didn't leave anything loose. <laughs> no. That remains to be seen. Yeah, that remains to be seen. Well, welcome back, and it's good to have you. I want to ask your prayers. As you can see, we're back to our old mode, right? For uh, Steve. Steve unfortunately had a very serious crash on his bike and is bruised. Thankfully, no bones are broken. But um, if Steve's not here, that should let you know. Because yeah. if he has to come in half crippled, he will. And so keep Steve in your prayers. Pray for healing, body, mind, and spirit. I also want to say congratulations to the proud parents. Um, with their permission, he sent me the pictures. So we're going to post it on Facebook. I'm going to send it to Sam. Congratulations to the Nakis. Chid had his white coat ceremony. As he begins and embarks on medical school, he looks like a doctor already, right? I'll give him a couple of years, then I could go to him for free. <laughs> <laughs> but congratulations, what a proud moment. Um, I felt your joy even in watching those pictures. I want to highlight several things before we get into the fundraising. First of all, our Vestry Retreat, which we know will be on October 22nd. Now, Someone from the diocesan office will be there, um, Reverend Canon Mary Suleru. She is known for this type of thing. She's the canon, acting canon to the ordinary and canon for congregational vitality. And so it will be from 9 to 11.30, really 9 to 11, 11.30, uh, any snacks. But here's the thing. It's open to as many who may come. And if you think the Lord is calling you to serve on vestry, we have three upcoming uh, positions um, and by the Lord know that I'm his ambassador if you think Father Mara is going to ask you to serve on the vestry you might want to uh, come and be at the retreat as well so keep that in mind also we are going to begin our Bible study on the 14th of September that is Wednesday at 10 a.m. we're going to start with an overview of the Bible and then go into the New Testament and try to do a walkthrough um, as we move forward. So please keep that in mind. You may join us via Zoom or you might be present in the office with us. So Bible study will be the second and fourth Wednesday of each month. A back to school, September 4th, which is next Sunday. It's the kickoff to the new school year. So Bring your pens, your pencils, your backpacks, right? Or just bring the backpack and come and be blessed. Teachers, students, as you return to school, Nikki, you're excited? <laughs> as, as much as you can be, right? I was thinking to my cousin, she has been a teacher now for umpteen years, and she said, you know, before I used to make sure everything was all set up. Now I'm just throwing up a couple of things and say I'll do it throughout the year, right? Um, so I understand it becomes very challenging, but our prayers, and as you return to school, as I said to Mariah's counselor, my deepest sympathy. <laughs> For the students! <laughs> right? No, no, we wish them well. And now I'm going to let Leah, you're going to say something, Leah, about our crab feast. Um, I have the long-awaited uh, tickets here for, for purchase, or you can go online and purchase them. Um, we are in full um, preparation mode, and um, if you want a ticket, come see me, or see Megan, or Todd. Um, <laughs> or Linda will have some, too. Linda will have some, too, or you can go online and buy tickets. So, um, it's crab feast, shrimp foil, and it should be good and fun. Yes. And in this case, I'm not asking you to ignore Jesus' advice, but invite your friends, your family, yes. and your rich friends. 
or tell them send the money, right? As well as the poor and everyone else. And then of course our bingo, you've heard a lot about it. That's going to follow um, in November and you can begin by asking people to sponsor that. So much happening as we get the school year off to a great start. These are our major fundraisers. We need them to keep things going and that is much appreciated by the vestry. Okay, that being said, I think those are all the notices. May you all enjoy your final week of summer at home, kids, and um, pray God's blessings upon all of you. Let us continue to walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right to give thanks and to praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing. Always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He strapped on his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shared for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for us your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and an ending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. 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 Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is.
your friends. More than any of them. <laughs> yes. There are plenty of them. Yeah. Yes. So all our children returning. As I said at one high school graduation, return with a degree and not a baby. <laughs> all right. <laughs> The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. The post communion prayer, page 365. Together, eternal God and Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen.
the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be God. Alleluia.